Hey, welcome back. And in today's video, I'd like to discuss these two things behind me. And they are a uh, portable generator and also a whole house generator uh, for providing electric power should the uh, power go out into your house or if you would need uh, off-site power. So they both have their options. But I guess first I wanted to uh, take a minute to wish everybody down in Florida good luck with uh, this hurricane that's going through. I've got some pretty close friends and some family members that are down there right now that are going to have to deal with this thing. And uh, I wish them luck. And I also, uh, I also hope they've got some kind of backup power because uh, all reports say that they can lose it for uh, a couple days to a couple of weeks. So... I wish everybody down there the best of luck and I hope that uh, you guys have prepared and get through this thing safe and uh, are able to uh, to manage the cleanup and whatever it takes to get through it. So everybody down in Florida, I wish you the best of luck. Okay, so getting back to these two generators I have here, um, I actually would like to give you my experience over the last 20 years. I have had this Generac for 20 years, 21 years now. I think I got it back in 2021, somewhere around there. But uh, yes, I have had this generator for over 20 years. And I have also had this Honda EU 3000 IS for, I'll bet, 15 years now. But I kind of wanted to talk about the comparison between the two. So let's start with the uh, Honda 3000. And like it says, it's a 3000 kW power. We have on here your two outlets, your, your 120 volt two outlets. And you've got a, it's a 30 amp, 125 volt outlet on this side. And then basically you've got the uh, controls over here. So, one thing that's really nice about this is it's an affordable option if you don't want to spend the money for something like that. And I can't speak in today's world what a unit like this costs to put in. I don't have any idea. I know back 20 years ago, it was expensive for 20 years ago. But as of 2022... Right now, expensive isn't just the average expensive. It's over the top expensive for anything, whether it be something like that or even a, a small portable generator. But uh, with these, these small portable generators, if you purchase one of these to have a uh, backup supply for your house, if the power should go out, one thing you got to keep in mind is the power rating that they put out and what you think in your house you might actually want to uh, have plugged into it if the power should go out. There's a lot of different considerations you have to take into account when you're looking at a generator versus a whole house generator. So let's talk about the supply or the, the gas supply for each one of these units. This one runs off of gasoline. You have to bring gas cans uh, keep gas cans stored up around in case you ever do have a power outage. You got to make sure that you have good gas on hand all the time. And uh, so if the power does go out, you can go get your uh, portable generator, pull it out and plug in whatever utility or appliance or whatever you, you have deemed necessary for doing or for wanting a portable generator. And on this particular unit, uh, I happen to have natural gas at the house, comes from uh, a line down at the road, and it is plumbed up to the back of this unit. That's what this line is here with the shutoff, and then this is the power line that comes out of the generator back to the house. But uh, I guess my point being is, is this is supplied by natural gas, which requires no electricity to flow that natural gas to something like this. So when the power goes out, I always have a natural gas supply. Um, it will always supply the, the generator. So I don't have to worry about gas cans or anything like that. Now, if you run one of these on LP or propane, 
then yes, you do have to make sure that uh, your propane tank is always filled. So right off the bat, there's a, a benefit to this style generator. I don't have to have gas cans on hand. I don't have to worry about how old those gas cans are as opposed to uh, a portable generator like this. Another thing that uh, you need to take into serious consideration with for something like a portable generator is it's only got a couple places to plug things into. So you have to make a determination of when you get something or you plan to use something like that. What is it you're going to have that you want to plug into this? And then you're going to have to create some kind of system, whether it be a box outside that those appliances run to that box and then you plug that box power into this unit to power those particular items within your house. And uh, so you, you almost have to have separate lines or additional wiring or additional lines through your house to plug these things in. Now, some of you may just say, okay, well, I'm gonna plug two extension cords into this thing, run it into the house and power what I need just to get by. That's okay, but when you're in the middle of a hurricane or a thunderstorm, or it's five below outside freezing during the winter and your power goes out, remember, you've got to pull this thing out, you've got to hook it up, you've got to fill it up, and then you have to also monitor your fuel usage. So you gotta, you gotta keep your fuel cans by and you also have to uh, keep that restocked with fuel. Now, granted, I understand completely there is a big price difference between this and this. But when you're talking price, it's all based off of convenience. The, the, the price you pay for this is for the convenience. The price you pay for this is just to get by to have a little bit of electric power. So in your decision making, you have to take into consideration what your budget can afford and how much messing around do you want to do if the power should go out. And when you go to something like a whole house generator, the convenience of just having it there always ready to work. I've had this thing for, like I said, 20 years plus, and I've only ever had to replace one item in this unit. And I'll show you real quick. If you lift the panel on it, right here is a low level oil sensor. That is the only thing that has ever gone bad on this. And I hope it's the only thing that ever will. But in reality, this thing has been bulletproof, has run flawlessly. It is a entire whole house generator and it's a 15 slash 16 KW, meaning uh, the, the 15 KW is based off of natural gas and the 16 is based off of LP or liquid petroleum propane. And uh, so those those specifications on this, and, and I'll I'll give a uh, specification on these and some of the other different sizes. But with this particular unit, the maintenance that needs done on this thing is change out the oil filter. You can see that this was done this year, just uh, two months ago. Uh, so you change the oil and the oil filter, and you can see down here. It's got an oil drain line. That front panel comes off and that oil line comes out the front side of the panel down here. And you just drain it into a bucket and then you take another pan and you drain your oil off. You re-add your engine oil back into it. You've got a dipstick and it's pretty much, that's all the service, that's all the maintenance this thing needs. So again, you're paying for the convenience of something like this. With a whole house generator, and I don't know how every one of them are, but something that people should know about these things is this particular unit, this particular model, I don't know what they do with them in year 2022 right now. I just know this one. And every week, this thing does a cycle power run, meaning... It will start on its own. It's on, its, it's on a schedule or a set timer here through the programming of it. Pretty simple to do, but uh, you set this thing up that it runs one cycle per week. 
and it runs for, I want to say, 10 minutes. So, yes, you burn 10 minutes worth of natural gas, which is minimal right now as far as cost. But that just keeps the motor cycling. It keeps everything. It keeps the battery fresh. Uh, it keeps the engine oil from, you know, just sitting there in the bottom and never being run. So what it is is just mainly a, a cycle to keep the unit fresh, up to speed, and, and, and working. And then also it does help that if you know that week it didn't come on, that maybe you better go check it. When you compare both of these, one thing that I'd like to point out is I can't ever think of a time that my power went out, that it was a beautiful sunny day. I can't think of a time that the power went out, that it was really convenient for me to get up at 2 in the morning or midnight or 6 a.m. or 4 a.m. to come out and have to do a portable unit. Uh, so again, you're going to pay for the convenience of a whole house generator. And you're also going to pay for the fact that this thing can supply power to the entire house. If the power goes out and there's a 10 second lag from the time the power goes out to this come on. So if you've got those occasional brownouts where the electric flickers or whatever, it's not kicking this on instantly as soon as the power goes out. Like I said, there's a 10 second delay. And what that does is it keeps this thing from kicking on when you have that real quick snap of a power break. What it's doing or what that delay is doing is making sure that you truly do have a, a pure total power outage before that unit kicks on. In most cases, if the power goes out and we have an air conditioner on, it will restart and it'll run. It'll run the whole house and won't have a problem. And I mean, we've got refrigerators plugged in, we've got ceiling fans running, we've got lights on and everything. So you also have to spec out the size of a whole house generator too. And I'll go through some of the specifications that I had way back 20 years ago, what what models you could get on these. So again, back to the uh, the portable generator. If you have a power outage, you're going to have to come out in a thunderstorm or in the middle of winter, or generally in not so good conditions. Set this up, uh, and I highly recommend that you never, ever, ever run one of these in your house or in the garage or anything like that. Common sense tells you that the carbon monoxide that comes off of a, a gasoline-powered engine will kill you, so you've got to have these outside somewhere when they're running. And... Uh, in that instance, then you know that you're going to have to run extension cords to it or run a power cord to it from a box on the side of your house or whatever. So again, it comes down to convenience. Do you and can you afford the convenience of something like this versus something like that? So I guess uh, in looking at it and all those years back, I elected for the convenience of a whole house generator. I know my entire family has been more comfortable with having that, knowing that when the power goes out, that this generator will power the uh, appliances and everything else back up. And prior to getting to this, one thing that kind of pushed me into a whole house generator was we had one winter that was close to uh, 15 to 20 below here very very cold winter um we had on record and our power went out and i did not have this generator at that time in my life the power went out and it was actually out for four days and after the first day at 15 to 20 below temperatures you start to get concerned because that's when pipes start to freeze that's when it gets pretty cold in your house and you start to feel like you're a, a caveman living somewhere in the not such great conditions. So that kind of is what pushed me into, okay, let's research whole house generators. I knew at the time I didn't really want to fuss with having a, a small generator and having to figure out how to plug it in, which lines to run to do that. I'm not saying that those aren't good to have. I'm just saying that the option for me was not wanting that versus wanting that. 
So let's go take a look at some of the other things that go along with the whole house generator. I mean, I think I've pretty much covered a portable generator. You've got gasoline, you have to supply to it. You've got to make sure that if this is your generator that for backup for your whole house or for your house and some of your appliances, then you've always got to make sure that you've got some decent gas for it. Uh, that may mean draining something out that's sat in there for six or seven months because it was not used or hasn't been used. Because the last thing you want to do is have bad gas in one of these things and go to get it for a power outage and come to find out it will not run because of bad gas. So these are all little things to think about if you're uh, researching generators for uh, power backup for your, your house or uh, camper or home or whatever whatever you're using it for. Uh, these, in my opinion, have a use and it's more towards, let's say, a camper, a motor home. Uh, if you're out tenting it somewhere, if you're out in the backwoods or you're at an event, um, something like that, that power is not available, then that is the way to go. And I know that people can take these and convert them and use them for things within their house to help them get by. But in all reality, the convenience of a whole house generator would uh, be the only way I would go. And I would highly recommend anybody that's looking into one or the other. And again, it's only if you can afford the convenience. And I say that because affording the convenience is what you're paying for here. The convenience of laying in bed, the power goes out. All you have to do is wait 10 seconds and this unit kicks on and your lights and your TV come back on and you know that this thing would run for days and days and days and days and not have any issues or any problems. Runs on, like I said, runs on natural gas. So it's never, ever been an issue for me and absolutely love it and would not go. If, if this thing died tomorrow, I would go buy a new one. I would go buy a new whole house generator at the drop of a hat just because they are that convenient to not have to deal with everything that goes with portable generators. But let's go take a real quick look at what goes along with something like this and uh, the switch panel and pretty much the ease of doing that. Now, I did have a certified electrician put this Generac power system in and that's the only way I would do it. I uh, did not know enough about electrical back then to do it, and I don't know that I know enough now that I would want to do it on my own. So let's go take a look at the switch panel. All right, so I've walked around the side of the house here, and when I added the uh, generator, this is the transfer switch or the switch panel for the Generac system. And you can see that there is a wire that goes down through here, and that actually goes into the house through the basement, out back to the generator. And when that generator kicks on, it provides the power up to the switch panel, tells that when to uh, this, when this no longer is pulling power, tells that switch panel to turn on, kick on the generator, and then brings power back into it, back into the house, down to the 200 amp service. When the main electric power kicks off, this switch panel kicks a generator on and then the generator provides power to the 200 amp service in the basement and all the lights come back on again. So what's in this panel is pretty simple, but within it, it's got the uh, utility service disconnect, 200 amp. It's got the uh, generator disconnect. So if you needed to do some service or whatever on one, you can bypass it. And then it's got the, the manual operation handle switch position where you can manually operate this thing. But that panel is what had to be added to the generator to create the power or to allow the power to come back through and back feed into the 200 amp service that's in the basement. And I'm not going to show you that because all it is is one big wire going down or, or a group of wires going down into the, uh, the panel that's in the basement there for the power supply. So as far as wiring up a generator, I'm sure uh, Kyle from uh, Spicer Designs could do it, but I can't. I it just, it's, 
is above and beyond my ability. So that's kind of where I left that to a professional to take care of that. And on the different units that they have, they've got the 7, 10, 13, 15 slash 16 KW units. And I said earlier, I've got the 15, 16 unit. But let's get to the, uh, the specifications on the, the unit I have. And like I said, it's the 15, 16 KW. And up here shows the, the model and all the different things. But uh, just to do it real briefly, um, it is 15,000 kW on natural gas and 16,000 on LP. 120, 240 rated voltage. Um, just trying to look here and see the circuits over here, 50 amp and all that. And it shows that there's the number of those that are available. Just, there's some general guidelines there. And if you want to stop the video here to take a look at some of this stuff, to uh, see if any of these models or if you are to look for yourself, what you're looking for. I wanted to show you some of that information as well. If you were on the on the edge as to, do I want to get a, a uh, whole, whole, whole house generator or do I want to stick with a portable generator or what you want to do? But anyhow, the Generac model for me has been uh, phenomenal and uh, just wanted to touch on some of the things with that. All right, so I hope that I've given you some understanding of the, the two options as far as a whole house generator versus a portable generator in case you're ever in need of uh, power backup and what some of the options are out there. And I hope that uh, through the 20 some years of a review on a 20 year old, 20 plus year old whole house generator, I can honestly say that the value or the cost of that particular unit 20 years ago has more than paid for itself. I've never lost a refrigerator or a freezer full of any food. Uh, I've never had inconvenience to uh, be without power for days. I've not had issues with the furnace not running in, in the house getting cold or pipes freezing. Uh, it is a very good peace of mind to have a generator backup knowing that when the power goes out within 10 seconds, I know that switch is gonna kick over, the generator is gonna kick on, and I will be able to continue living the normal life that we have when all the power is out and uh, not knowing how long that situation will last. Again, my, uh, my sincere hopes that the people of Florida make it through this hurricane okay. I hope my family and my friends are able to ride it out and escape any major damage and also hope that the cleanup goes well for them because I think they uh, I think they're expecting some kind of damage down there where they live but uh, let's just hope that it's not tremendous or a, a huge issue for them and I thought also this would be a good time to discuss a generator whether it's a, a portable or a whole house generator. For any of you that uh, in the near future, if you were on the edge of what you wanted to do, or if anybody in Florida happens to be watching this for you know a week after and, and be on the edge or on the fence of, should I get a generator? I'm hoping that this video will give a little bit of clarity to which way you might wanna go. Uh, again, the convenience of the whole house generator and the cost of it, in my mind, was way worth it. And I would do it again in a heartbeat if I had to. If I was to move tomorrow, I would put a whole house generator in just because of the convenience of them. Um, yes, they're expensive. Yes, it takes money to do that stuff. But in the long run, I've not had, like I said, any losses or any inconveniences due to not having power and I have not ever had to deal with a portable generator with running extension cords and deciding which appliance that I want to run at that point in time. So uh, when you're looking at your options for do I want a whole house generator or do I want a portable generator, I hope that some of the uh, information I've given you today helps you out. 
So again, good luck to everybody in Florida. And uh, I think we'll end this video today and hopefully you got some good information from it. Thanks and I'll see you again soon.